they, you can kind of count them as the same. So if you have, uh, well, not count them the same. If you have a picture that is um, 300 pixels, it will print out at one inch clearly because you have 300 pixels per inch. So that's sort of another way you can sort of tell how big photos are. There's some math involved, which is never fun. Um, did you have a question? No. Oh, sorry. You can well, it was uh, for before I learned I'm not personal sizing. Will you be covering the Siri and sound Siri and when we should be using it? Um, I wasn't planning, but you can definitely ask about that when we sort of get there. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to know. Okay. <coughs> Um, the rest was about how to save a PDF, but maybe we'll cover that sort of later once we get into design. Yeah. So if you're just worried about website design, then uh, would you tend to actually have less dust per inch for better loading time? Yeah, and Juno will go over that. Um, he's going to go over all web stuff, and but yes, you would. Uh, this next slide is about offset versus digital printing. Do you guys want to go over this? Yeah, okay. Um, so the two, <clears throat> the two printing ways that you'll be faced with when you do business cards or, or anything for your company is um, offset and digital. So let's start with digital. Digital is done on a laser printer. So like your office photocopier, your Xerox, your Canon. Um, that's digital printing. That's essentially taking toner and uh, powder and it's just fusing on the piece of paper. So quick, cheap, um, and that's what other printers do too, but with better quality um, toners when you're sending it up to get digitally printed somewhere. It'll be better quality than your office copier unless you have a really nice photocopier in your office, which is also possible. Um, it's good for if you're printing low quantity things, 50, 100 business cards, 200 business cards, 500, the line's a little bit blurry. Um, if you're printing a thousand business cards, for example, you might go to offset just because the pricing now with places like Jukebox that we talked about, the pricing is so competitive that if, if you are okay with spending $80 instead of $30, for example, um, you can have offset business cards. So offset business cards is real printing. So done on a printing press where there are men physically matting and adding ink and stuff to the printer. Um, and so that's why you get a better quality because there's somebody there physically uh, manning the printer, looking at the stuff, every sheet that comes out of the machine. And uh, so you know when I showed you that picture of uh, the butterfly and the dots or the text where the rich black where you saw the shift in the, the cyan or the black, they're there with um, a microscope looking, make sure, making sure there's no shift um, because that's what you're paying the money for. So there is somebody that actually does that um, when you're getting like, books printed, uh, annual reports, large quantity brochures, offset, anything offset, like that's typically what you're getting. So do you notice the difference, even if it's like text-based, say black on blue business cards, it's just text and nothing else, do you notice the difference between offset and digital? The ink also lays differently on the paper, yeah. So uh, with digital, the ink lays on top of the paper. So if you have, say, white areas in your design, say you have, you know, a red band with white text and the white text is white from the paper showing through, you'll actually see that the red is higher than the white paper because it's just ink sitting on top of the paper. Whereas if you were to print that same thing offset, it would all sink into the paper. So that's, I mean, this is like really, like, the everyday flyer in the mail, you're probably not going to notice a difference. But if you want like a nicer piece, um, if you're doing something high-end, high-end real estate, jewelry, car, sure, you can use you know digital and that's perfectly fine. But um, the really nice luck stuff, that's typically done offset. But you can do some, uh, yeah, you can mix some offset. In, 
those are the two differences, uh, generally speaking. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, do you want to ask your question about type? Because I wasn't really going to cover anything. Um, so what was your what was your question again? We often come across uh, Suri and sans Suri, and I was wondering if you could explain that, and also when, when is it best to use Suri or sans Suri? Okay, uh, so what you're asking, I'm just going to go back and refer to something, is... So a serif font is a font like this, fonts that have these. These are serifs, tails at the end of letters. Um, and it used to be thought that if you use serif for books, for smaller stuff, like heavy, you know, that was sort of easier to read. But now it's, it's really not. It's more just based on um, your choice of the actual typeface you choose. Um, so there is not one is always better than the other, it's what kind of looks better in the use. Yeah. Um, sans serif, which is like the top line where it doesn't have any, any tails or serifs, that's uh, just more modern. Um, so I mean, I still think serifs are easier to read, like in a printed book or something, but it, there's no like hard rule or anything like that. So, I don't know if that helped. If it's really small, especially, totally, because, I mean, there's pixels, and you need yeah. something to make up, you know, that tiny space of the letter, right? Yeah. Someone told me that, said that it's redesigned, typically, you should have either a serif at the, for, like, the header, and some serif for the body or he said that you use sans serif for the header and then serif for the body like that you should for contrast have different yeah if you want to um okay that's a good point if you want to mix typefaces uh depending on you know what it what it is you're creating let's go with a general rule of no more than three different typefaces um, if you're doing a business document, for example, yeah, you might have one font for the header and then a different font for the body copy. Um, and they could, they could be opposites, they could be a sans serif with a serif or vice versa, or it could be the same and maybe the heading is just bolder, bigger, different color, in a box, underlined, um, different that way. But, um, yeah. I'm going to give um, later a tool for um, pairing fonts, like an online tool, so you can uh, see how it looks like sans serif and serif and bottom and you know, combinations, so you can create your own too. Cool. Um, any other questions about type, print, um, creating documents for print before Juno talks about web? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Are we having a next meeting break or something? Or? Um, we can. Yeah. If you want to have like maybe like a five minute stretch break or phone break, question break. That's good. Valentine's break. Valentine's <laughs> <laughs> break.